What is up, everybody? It is the Dog Dads. That's me. Weekly raw feeding live Q and A. So welcome to all of you that are watching, both the live viewers that are now watching, <clears throat> as well as those of you guys watching during the replay. Because I know that a large majority of our views will come from the replays. So thank you very much for watching. Now, for those of you, for those of you can't talk already, for those of you guys that are joining us for the very first time, the whole purpose of these live Q&A sessions is for you to be able to hop on here once a week with yours truly, the dog dad, and talk about raw feeding stuffs. Let you guys ask your raw feeding questions and really just have a discussion, have a chat, really kind of a one-way chat because you guys can't talk, but you can type. So that is the purpose. I want you guys to ask any raw feeding, fresh food related questions that you have. If I know the answer, I will give you the answer, at least the answer in my opinion. And if I don't know the answer, I'll tell you that I don't know the answer. And I'll try and send you somewhere that you can find the answer, whether that's another blog, another website, another YouTube channel, a Facebook group, a something, a somewhere, a someone. Somewhere that you can get those questions answered. So thank you guys so much for joining me. And if you are wanting to feed raw, you want to start feeding fresh foods, but you just have no idea where to start, trust me, you're not alone. Literally tens of thousands of other people have been there. And if that's you, go and check out rawfeeding101.com and get started on Raw Feeding 101. It'll walk you through everything that you need to know to get started feeding fresh foods. So let's take a look at who is here with us uh, today. We have a special pause for people. I love it. We have Alyssa Bailey. Hello, Alyssa. And by the way, special pause for people. I believe that this is your first time here, which is awesome. Welcome. Uh, Jasmine, a repeat offender. No, I'm just kidding. A repeat viewer and somebody, thank you very much, Jasmine, that was able to help me put together this uh jasmine again is here samantha is here hello samantha so let's start taking a look at some of these uh questions that we got going on special pause for people already had one from the get-go before i was even able to jump into the live stream so thank you very much uh special pause for people says can you feed some raw with kibble and kibble 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 and bone meal yes you can you absolutely can, and I encourage that if you cannot go on a full fresh food, raw foods diet, that you do add fresh foods to your dog's food, whether that's meat every now and then, whether that's eggs, whether that's coconut oil, low glycemic vegetables, prefer preferably fermented. I absolutely believe in adding fresh foods to kibble if you cannot make a full transition to 100% fresh foods. <coughs> Let's see here. And Jasmine was saying, hey, hey. Alyssa is saying, hello. Um, let's see here. Saro saying, hi, Scott. I remember you mentioned that to feed more of red meat, right? I want to know why so I can explain it to my fans and clients. Excellent question, Saro. So the reason that red meat is superior to white meat, it's not to say that you can't feed white meat too, obviously. I mean, I tell people in the raw feeding course, the raw feeding 101 course at rawfeeding101.com to start out with a white meat bone in protein like chicken, something like that. So white meat is definitely not bad. It's just that red meat is better because it has a, much more complete amino acid profile. It's just an overall better meat. Oftentimes, you know, it, a lot of this depends on where you get it from, obviously, but some of the white meats like chicken are often subject to some of the highest concentrations of the bad stuff like medications, you know, um, subpar feed, those types of things, which further makes it a less superior protein 
there's a lot of reasons that red meat is better than white meat. But the if we're just looking at the two meats with similar situations, similar feeding practices, all that kind of stuff, it's the amino acids that really make the difference between red meat and white meat. So I hope that that helps. And if you're explaining this to people, obviously white meats are going to be cheaper. They're going to be easier for most people to get a hold of at affordable prices, again, like chicken. So if you are explaining this to people, what I would shoot for in the very least is to go for 50% of both, at least 50% red meat and at least 50% white meat. The more red meat that you can feed, the better. If somehow you can pull off feeding completely red meats, then awesome. Uh, I would still recommend putting in white meats for the sake of variety, but the more red meat, the better. I hope that helps. Uh, Jasmine is saying, you're all dressed up tonight. Fist bump, fist bump right back at you, my friend. Uh, no, not a murderer or RF 101 t-shirt. No, not today. It is crazy. And I don't know if you guys can hear it. No, I don't think you can because it's not registering on my microphone thing here. But I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I've got fans, plural, fans, plural, going in this room because it is so hot and humid today. We live in an older home and we're not set up with central air. It's all swamp cooler. So in my office where we're at right now is in the farthest end of the house. And so it's just, it's one of the hottest rooms in the house. And so I've always, it's point being, point being this shirt breathes a lot better than, than those t-shirts sometimes. <laughs> it's a little bit baggier, a little bit bushier, a little bit, a little bit airier. So that's why I'm wearing it. Not to be fancy, but because it's not going to make me want to die quite as much. <laughs> uh, but thank you. Uh, Samantha is saying hi. Hello, Samantha. Nice to see you back with us today. Uh, Christine is saying hello. Hello, Christine. Guys, make sure to keep those raw feeding questions coming. And if you can, please share this video right now while we are in the middle of it so that as many people can come in here and enjoying the experience as possible. As many people as possible can ask their raw feeding questions live instead of having to put them into the group or something like that and then wait for them. And on that note, if you're not a member of Raw Feeding 101 and you're watching this video right now or you're watching it on the replay, come and join us on Facebook. It's completely free. Just type in Raw Feeding 101 and you will find the Raw Feeding 101 group. Just request to come in. I'll get you added and you can ask even more raw feeding questions in there. Uh, Saro is saying thank you. It helps. You are welcome, Saro. Let me know how that goes. Let's see here. What do we have on the agenda to talk about today? What should we address first? Okay, so right now, as it stands, unless something changes, we have the third episode of the Raw Feeding Breakfast Bowl this Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. 11 a.m. Pacific time, which for those of you guys on the East Coast would be 2 p.m. If I, Yep, it would be 2 p.m. on the East Coast. So if you are wanting to watch the third installment, the third episode of the Raw Feeding Breakfast Bowl with myself, Kimberly Gautier from keepthetailwagging.com and Ronnie Lejeune from perfectlyrawsome.com, then please make sure to, while you're here, as soon as we're done with this video, stay on YouTube, go up to the search bar and type in Raw Feeding Breakfast Bowl and make sure that you subscribe and click that little bell notification icon so that when we go live on Saturday, you get a notification on your phone saying, hey, go watch Scott and Ronnie and Kimberly talk about raw feeding and dog stuff. Because that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Samantha Fields is saying, Cooper has gone number two and he's perfectly fine. Glad to hear it, Samantha. Um, for those of you guys that do not know, a little bit of a rewind. I think this was being discussed originally on Friday in the Friday live stream in the 
the raw feeding 101 group so make sure you guys go and join but uh samantha's dog was having some issues going number two it was not pooping and we all suggested several things several things were tried uh even did the responsible thing went to the vet just to make sure that i was like it's fine it's fine it's fine and everything has passed <laughs> it looks like everything is going well so everything is going well glad to hear it samantha glad to hear things are moving along and i promise i'm done with the poop puns so let's see here Aly Alyssa bailey is saying in february colby weighed in at 15.3 pounds at her yearly vet visit in march we started raw she gets 2.5 percent of 15 pounds of 80 10 5, 5, plus additional five percent of veggies slash slash extras uh today she weighed in at 13.7 pounds she looks awesome but should i up her food and i was skipping to two questions there because it looks like Alyssa's question got cut in two for some reason so i promise sean and jasmine will come back to you guys but Alyssa, this is all dependent on your dog this is one of those situations where the golden rule if you will the golden rule being know your dog as well as knowing your goals and your circumstances etc that's what's going to dictate whether or not you should up your dog's food now if your dog was at an ideal weight at 15.3 pounds then yeah consider increasing and do it slowly maybe by you know 0.25 percent so instead of two and a half percent going to 2.75 percent and if that doesn't work then moving slowly again up to three percent however if your puppy if your girl is looking good she is still active she's not acting sluggish like she's Wilkins doing something crazy out there and she's not acting crazy like crazy tired and like she has no energy and she's again looking good and she could have stood to lose a pound or two then I wouldn't do anything one of these things is going to be again looking at and you can get some more information on this by going and watching my interview that I did my original interview not the one I released two days ago or yesterday with Ronnie Lejeune. Uh, just type in dog dad Ronnie Lejeune, which is L E J E U N E, and watch that video. She goes over some ways to figure out whether or not your dog is in an ideal condition, you know, looking at breed standards. And that's the point that I was wanting to get to was oh, it's the dryer. It's not Woken. Sorry. You guys know how it is. When you have dogs and you hear weird noises going on in the background, you're like, what is going on? But look at your breed's standard, Alyssa. Uh, what should they look like? What does an obese dog in your breed look like? What does an underweight dog in your breed look like? What does that ideal, again, look like? Also keep in mind that if you are going to be going and looking at something like AKC or what do they have in Canada, the CKC, I might just be guessing because I'm a dumb American, but who knows? But look at if you're looking at those sources, like kennel club sources for breed standards, keep in mind that their standards are often a little on the heavy side because they look better for showing. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Do your research, maybe get into some of these other groups that are you know, like Mission Slim Possible that Ronnie runs, and I'll type that in here into the comment section, Mission Slim Possible, and that's a Facebook group. Maybe get in there and start asking for fit pictures of your dog's particular breed. Jump into other fit dog groups and start asking for pictures of, you know, healthy, ideal pet weight dogs for your breed again. The bottom line is figure out what your dog's ideal weight is, their ideal figure, confirmate, well not confirmation, now I'm thinking AKC stuff, but figure out your dog's ideal 
And if 15.3 was their ideal, then yeah, up their food a little bit. If closer to 13.7, which is what she's at right now, is closer to ideal, then stay at that. If she continues to lose weight and she gets a little bit underweight, then increase the food then. This is why there's no, <clears throat> as you know, Alyssa, having read, and I think you signed up for the course too, having read the perfect example of that. So take a look at your dog's ideal, figure out what that ideal situation is, and then adjust your feeding percentages accordingly. So let's take a gander at what we've got going on. I think the first question that I missed was from Sean. Uh, Sean is saying, Sean Ross, another awesome raw feeding 101 student that you can find at rawfeeding101.com. Uh, says, will it be available to watch later? Have to take Lucy, his new red men pin, uh, to the vet at 1030. Hi, by the way. Hello, Sean. It is nice to see you. You kick butt. Way to get through the course so fast and implement, make changes, and you're just rocking it. Well done. <clears throat> yes, the raw feeding breakfast bowl live stream will be 100% available to watch later. It is, the Raw Feeding Breakfast Bowl happens here on YouTube on the Raw Feeding Breakfast Bowl channel. So when we're done here, everybody make sure to stay on YouTube, go to the search bar, type in Raw Feeding Breakfast Bowl, subscribe and click the bell icon so that you get notified when we go live on Saturday. And then if you happen to not be able to make that live stream, it will be available in a replay. And in fact, in preparation of that, before Saturday, after you subscribe and click the bell, watch our first two episodes. Kind of get up to, <clears throat> you know, caught up on what we've been doing, what we talked about the first couple of times, and maybe you have some questions about what we talked about the first couple of times. Just go and enjoy that content. It's more raw feeding fresh food content for you guys. It's completely free, right? So go and check that stuff out. And then Jasmine said, love those gals. Um, bloop, 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 bloop. I, I'm totally, totally lost, Jasmine. I have no idea who you're talking about when you say I love those gals. <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna give you a thumbs up for spreading love. There we go. There's a thumbs up for spreading the love. Uh, let's see here. Alyssa Bailey. Okay, got that. Uh, Christine, I tried two of the balanced meals on Rodney and. Becker's meal plan. My dogs turn their nose up at it. Uh, what a waste of food. Guess it's too, ba too balanced for my dogs. You know, give it, do the normal stuff, Christine. Give it a try as far as, you know, maybe feeding it frozen, partially frozen. Maybe try sprinkling it on other foods. Maybe try slowly introducing it as part of the meals and then making it more and more. Maybe you make mix it with something like goat's milk or colostrum or kefir or something like that and make some popsicles out of it because I know it's hot where you're at. Use that food. Don't make it a waste. Don't throw it away. You can find something to do with it. Find something to do with it. But yeah, that does always kind of suck when we make foods or we prepare meals and then we just can't get our dogs to consume it. But you could try the tough love too. You could try tough love. And if you want to hear about tough love, again, you guys go and watch that video with, uh, just type this in dog, dad, putting it into the comments section, dog, dad, Ronnie Lejeune. And Ronnie talks a little bit about tough love. She does not let her dogs waste food because she works too hard earning the money for it and preparing it. So maybe tough love is the answer as well, Christine. But yeah, that does, that does kind of always suck, and it's kind of irritating when that happens. I feel you. I've been there. Uh, Sean, haha, ha, I keep hearing a door squeak and thinking it was my dog whining today. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, Sean, then you get what I am thinking about right now every time that I hear this crazy noise, and then I have to remind myself, it's the dryer. It's the dryer. Wolken's not being naughty. It's the dryer. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Alyssa Bailey. She is a 50-50 mix of a Yorkie and a Min Pin. So you and Sean have some stuff in common, but she does have a clearly defined waist and a slight tuck of the abdomen. I need to get a new profile picture of her to compare. Uh, 
finished the course in two and a half days. It was amazing. Oh, oh Sean, Alyssa kicked your butt, dude. She totally beat you. She totally beat you. That oof, two and a half days. That is crazy. So if we're looking at the math of, because I'm not so good at the, their maths, if we're looking at 70 videos divided by two and a half days, that's like 28 videos a day. <laughs> what were you doing? <laughs> that's awesome though. Congratulations. Super, super epic. I love it. I love it. I love it. You, Alyssa, need to post a review and a testimonial and a pat myself on the back, my being you, for getting through the course in two and a half days because that's epic. You deserve a backpack. Backpack. That's awesome. I think that is the new record. Put it up. Post it in the group and be like making a challenge to see if anybody can beat me because right now, Sean, you just got knocked out of the running, man. You just you just got taken down off of the fastest course go through throne. Alyssa Bailey now holds holds the crown. Two and a half days. That's crazy. Make that post, Alyssa. I want to see it and I want to see you tag me in the group saying I made it through in two and a half days. Here's what I thought about it. I dare anybody to beat me. Because <laughs> I would love to see that. Because that's crazy. At 28 videos a day. And then, you know, the half day, whatever. But that's crazy. That is crazy. Uh, let's see here. Jasmine is saying, any thoughts on great, all caps, great. Uh, any caps on great chew for raw fed, intensely strong chewers. Frozen isn't a good option choking experience way to learn from experience with your dogs kudos and air dried bones also not an option to straight through them for sage i 100 percent hear you on that problem um i'm not so much of a fan of the frozen just because my dogs don't get the fact that it's frozen and they haven't choked on anything yet but they do they just have no respect for the fact that it's that it's completely frozen and they will still try and get through it. And I've had also been there. Not so great. Not so great. But here is what I would do. One thing that I like to do is get the pork shoulder um, things from the store. You can use all the meat for the dogs. Or you can use the meat for yourself. You and your husband can have a homestead barbecue. And then... Freeze that. I know I was just talking about freezing, but follow along with me here. Freeze that and then pull it out on a really hot day. Let it thaw out a little bit and then let them have that out in the sun. It's a great source of bone. You might be able to skip bone for a day or two after that. It's super cool. So it's going to cool your dogs down. It's going to give them lots of mental stimulation. And none of the bone there is too thick for the dogs to to get through once it's been frozen and it's super moist like that. So that is one thing that you could try. And one thing that I have done successfully and my phone's making a bunch of noises. But if you don't want to deal with that because the, the partially frozen still freaks you out. One of my favorite options, which we haven't done in quite a while and I'm missing them is the raw hide rolls from raw feeding Miami. And I know everybody, everybody, Pump the brakes, pump the brakes. I know that's died, chemically treated, terrible, awful, gross, disgusting stuff that is just terrible, terrible. It's not what we're talking about. It's not the raw hide rolls that I'm talking about. These are just hide that has been rolled and dried. It's literally dried skin rolls, basically. And they are amazing. Our German Shepherd power chewing raw fed beasts of dogs can get an accumulative, you know, each of them like eight hours worth of chewing and mental stimulation and all that kind of stuff out of one of these 10 to 12 inch rolls. Super, super awesome. They come in different lengths depending on your dog sizes, but for your dog size, you know, the 10, 12 inches might be the appropriate size. And just like anything else, watch them when they're chewing. Let them have a good time. It's just like any other recreational chew. Don't leave them unattended because things happen. You never know. But I love them. 
they've always treated us well and the dogs absolutely lose their minds over them and it's hours and hours of strong healthy all natural chews that aren't chemically treated glues dyes all this crap that we normally associate rawhide with so i highly recommend that as an alternative if you don't want to try the um the pork shoulder that i was talking about so i hope that helps let's see here um sean is saying okay cool uh, Jasmine is saying she needs some mental and chewing stimulation exercise in this hot weather. Yes, Jasmine, I highly recommend that port shoulder idea then. Um, again, if you're not down for that, then you could always put the rawhide rolls in the freezer or at least put them in the fridge and get them cold that way. But I would definitely look at those port shoulder um Pork shoulder options. Great, great. The dogs have loved them. I've only done it a couple of times, but the dogs loved it every time. It was really warm when we did it. They felt, I guess I didn't, I shouldn't assume because I didn't ask them, but they appeared to be cooled down afterwards. They chilled, they took a nap, they got their mental stimulation. So I highly recommend giving that a shot. Um, oh, and she's talking about, you were talking about Ronnie and Kimberly. Makes sense, Jasmine. Makes sense. Uh, Christine. Uh, Sean saying, Christine, my daughter's dog has been making out like a bandit from treats and grinds. Lucy hates. She can't stand goat, quail, or pheasant so far. Sean, same thing to you, man. Keep trying them. Keep slowly mixing them in. Uh, try hiding them in things, feeding them partially frozen. Uh, keep trying to work them in so that all that money and hard work and everything else that you did does not go to waste. Uh, let's see here. Sean says, also, I want to see a pic of her on the site. That would be an awesome mix at Alyssa Bailey. Yes, Alyssa, we want to see that post. Now Sean's chiming in too. We want to see that post. You are the reigning, got through the course, the fastest champion. We need to see a post from you in the group. We need to. Uh, let's see here. Th two and a half days. That would be tough to beat. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. I mean, it's... It's my course, and I don't think that I could get through it that fast unless I was just completely not paying attention to, to it at all and just let it play in the background. And I don't even know if then if I could even find the time to just let it play. <laughs> so you're awesome, Alyssa. Well, well done. Uh, let's see here. What we got going on next? Jasmine says, awesome. I forgot that Raw Feeding Miami had those. Yes, they are amazing. The Rawhide rolls, the dehydrated rawhide rolls from Raw Feeding Miami are the bomb. They're so good. I love them. I'm sad that we haven't ordered them in forever, but it's definitely on the agenda because they are amazing. I highly recommend it. Again, though, just like anything else, watch them. You know the drill. You're not a novice or a beginner or anything like that, Jasmine. Babysit the babies and make sure that all is well as they're chewing on their recreational chews and your dogs are going to thank you for it. Um, let's see here. We don't currently have any more questions. Guys, keep those raw feeding questions and comments coming. Now, I have two other fun announcements for you while we are here on the live stream. First off, for those of you guys that follow me on Instagram, you may have seen some inklings of this. I didn't know if this waddle all earlier this week. <clears throat> but... So very soon, in fact, we're going to be recording for the first time this week. It'll be pre-recorded and then posted later. But Ms. Brittany Young, I shouldn't say Ms. She's a Mrs. She's married to Tyson, my Australian homeboy. Um, Brittany Young and myself are starting a new podcast, actual podcast, audio only, called Pet Junkie Radio. I'm so excited to do it. It's going to be all audio. It's not going to be video or anything like that. Uh, we're going to be putting it up on the Podbean platform and also getting it eventually distributed to iTunes as well. And we're just going to talk about natural pet stuff. Yeah, we're going to talk about dogs, we're, which is where I'm going to be able to add in information. We're going to talk about cats where I'll be able to add absolutely no information <laughs> except for appreciation and other natural pet stuffs. And it's going to be incredible. 
I hope that all of you guys subscribe to it and listen to it after we get it posted. We're going to be doing our very first recording uh, a little less than 24 hours from now. When it will be posted in live, I don't know. But make sure that when all those announcements come out that you make sure to follow us because Brittany brings a lot to the table, super talented girl, super happy to meet her um, at Super Zoo this year, a couple of weeks ago. And I'm so glad that we're doing this collaboration together. It's going to be awesome. And I also, 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 also have to thank the two crazy cat ladies, Jane Adrian. If you guys aren't following the two crazy cat ladies, you're crazy. Go and follow the two crazy cat ladies. But they threw an event for all of us pet influencer peoples while we are at Super Zoo. And they called it the pet junkies, I believe, the pet junkies after party, something to that effect. And so we were like, you know what? We want to use pet junkies. We reached out to them. We're like, can we use this? Are you going to be mad at us <laughs> if we use pet junkies for our podcast name? And they were all for it. So thank you to Brittany for coming up with the awesome idea for this podcast. And thank you to the two crazy cat ladies for letting us totally jack that awesome name. Pet junkies radio is going to be the name of the podcast. Pet Junkies Radio. It's going to be epic. Brittany already made us an awesome logo. I can't wait to get started as soon as there's more info as far as, um, you know, where it's going to be, what the links are, where you can subscribe, follow, all that stuff. I will put it everywhere, you guys. I'll put it here in a video on YouTube. I'll put it on my Instagram, which is at dogdadofficial all one word, of course, and at raw feeding 101. I'll put it on Twitter, which is the exact same as Instagram. I'll put it on the Facebook page, the Facebook group, my personal page. I'll put it over all over the freaking place so that you guys can. Uh, Sorrow saying, by the way, congratulations on reaching and passing 1000 subscribers on YouTube. Thank you, Sorrow. I appreciate that. As those of you guys that were here last week know I was talking about being this close to passing the 1,000 subscriber mark here on YouTube, and it's officially happened. Um, three days ago, four days ago, something like that, working from home makes all your days just like, like smushed together, and it's all just one big long day. But yes, thank you, Saro. I appreciate that. Huge deal for me. It took something like 18 months or something like that to reach a thousand subscribers. So I couldn't be more happy about it. Uh, YouTube gives a lot of push to channels that are over a thousand subscribers. So this means that we're going to be able to get more raw feeding and fresh food information out to more pet parents. So I couldn't be more excited about that. So thank you very much, Saro. I appreciate that. Um, Jasmine, is it time to make your fermented veggies? It is, it is, it is, it is. I am such a bad person. Ugh, every time that my wife gets home from doing our weekly grocery shopping, I'm like, I forgot to tell Ariane to get veggies. I'm just so bad, so bad. I just need to get it done already. I'm just really what's going to end up happening is I'm just going to get a particular bug up my butt one day. And I'm just going to drive to the store and go and get all the stuff that I need. And I'm just going to do it because it needs to be done. It needs to be done already. Uh, let's see here. Sean says, I'm so sad. I'm allergic. I miss having a pet cat. You know, I used to be allergic to cats as well, Sean. Used to be really bad. I'd get the puffy eyes, the itching, all that kind of stuff. And it was just like over time. My body just said, never mind. We don't want to be allergic to cats anymore. <laughs> so I'm sorry that happened to you. And I hope that it goes away like it did for me. Uh, let's see. Jasmine is saying, I'm excited about your podcast. And Sean is agreeing. I'm so excited. It's going to be super, super fun. And it's actually going to put a little, it's going to be different because Video is always different than audio and vice versa. Just like, you know, the videos are different than blogs that people do, like Kimberly and Ronnie is starting and Brittany is starting. <clears throat> it's going to be different and it's going to be a little less, you know, pressure because as much as I love doing this with you guys, video is a whole other ball game. 
You know, if this was just audio, I could be like sitting here in like a tank top with a crazy hat all sideways and who knows if I have pants on or not. Who knows? Well, I guess you guys don't know that right now, but I promise I do. But video just adds a whole other level of complication to things and a whole other level of stuff to make sure it's working, more equipment. So it'll be nice to simplify things a little bit and just go pure audio format. So I'm excited for the podcast too. Should be a crazy, crazy bit of fun. Crazy bit of fun. Uh, let's see here. Heather is saying, I made it. Three exclamation points. It's been too long. Hello, all. Yeah, Heather, what's the deal? I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding, Heather. I'm glad that you are here as well. And by the way, another special thank you to Jasmine and now Heather and Christine, all three of which were in the advanced reader copy team for the Raw Feeding 101 book. Dot com slash rf 101 stuff how super professional is that <clears throat> all right so there you go guys that's in there now uh glad to see you heather glad you were able to join us even if it is only for the last 15 minutes you're still here you are still here and yes you do have that same profile picture here on youtube guys heather works at a zoo and she works with an elephant and that's freaking epic I want to hang out with elephants all day. What what gives, Heather? Why you got to take the cool stuff from the rest of us, huh? Huh? I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But I am a little bit jealous because that'd be pretty freaking cool to hang out with elephants. And I don't know what other kind of animals that you work with throughout the day, but it's always been like this lifelong mini goal to like bottle feed a baby tiger. And you might be my in for that. You might be my in for that. Even though that baby should be getting some and some raw meats and stuff. But I'm sure there's a point where they need the milk, right? So it's still a goal, still a goal. Hook me up, hook a dog dad up. Uh, let's see here. Christina is saying, what is a podcast? So a podcast is basically, think of YouTube videos minus the video. All that a podcast is, is what is a really good way to explain it? If you have ever been in your car listening to the radio and there's that regular everyday show that always comes on at a certain time and it always has those same people talking about it, like, you know, Joe and Debbie on X101 radio or whatever it happens to be and they do that show and they talk about the same types of subjects. It's basically like that, but it's on the internet instead. So in this case, it would be... Brittany, the pet girl, and myself getting together and talking about natural pet stuff. So it is an audio only radio or show that is usually based on a very specific topic. In our case, natural pet stuffs. And if you guys haven't followed um, Brittany yet, the pet girl, I recommend you do that. You can find her on Instagram at instagram.com slash i am the pet girl is what i believe that it is and if you can't find that then she is on facebook at the pet girl which you should 100 percent be able to find she's the only one so i'm super excited to do that it's going to be a whole ton of fun and yeah i just can't wait I can't wait to have another medium of fresh food information out there. Uh, Christine is saying, where do we find it when it's live? More information coming on that, Christine, when we have it all buttoned up, we're gonna record the audio tomorrow and then get it posted at a later date. I don't know if it's gonna be days or a week or something later, but once that happens and it's actually ready for you guys, I'm kind of just giving you guys a little bit of a sneak peek right now. Once it's ready to go, then I will share it everywhere. I'll make a video about it here on YouTube. I will put it um, on Instagram and Twitter. I will put it on my personal page on Facebook. I will put it on the Dog Dad page on Facebook. And I will put it on the uh, Raw Feeding 101 group. And for those of you guys that are on my email list, I'll send an email out about that as well. 
And if you're not on the email list, then go to scottthedogdad.com or you can go to rawfeeding101.com slash RF101 stuff and you can get on the email newsletter that way as well. And so I'm going to put it everywhere, Christine. As soon as it's available, it's going to be in your face and every possible medium that I have going right now. Uh, let's see here. Alyssa says, I have to watch the rest on replay, but one last question. Same dog as earlier. What do you recommend for bladder support? She had a UA today and everything checked out there. She's six years, by the way. What I would do, Alyssa, is two different things. One, because this is one of those situations where I don't have a good answer for you, <clears throat> which is, again, I don't like doing that to you guys. If I don't know something, I'm not going to pretend like I do. So I would do two things. One, I would go to keepthetailwagging.com, which is a blog by Kimberly Gauthier, which I will put here in the comment section as well, keepthetailwagging.com. And I would search for just the word bladder or bladder support, something like that. And I can almost guarantee you that you're going to find an article that she's written that has supplements and foods and practices for just that kind of thing. I can't imagine that she hasn't already because it seems like she's written about everything at this point. Um, after that, if you're still having issues, then maybe make a post in the Raw Feeding 101 group, Raw Feeding University, uh, the Raw Feeding community, all the other Raw Feeding groups that you're in and ask the same question. And then in our group, the Raw Feeding 101 group, uh, maybe try tagging somebody like Gregory Lucas, which is G-R-E-G-O-R-I, Lucas, L-U-K-A-S, and asking his thoughts on it because he's a former vet tech and has a lot more experience in this area than myself. So those are the two things I would try is lots of posts all over the place and asking, or not asking, but visiting keepthetailwagging.com. Uh, Alyssa says, so true. She really has written about everything. Yeah, she's been at it for a while. I think that Keep the Tail Wagging is four years old right now, four years old, something like that. So yeah, she's definitely, definitely written about a lot of stuff, like lots and lots and lots of stuff. So let's see, what else do we have going on? Christine is saying, okay, uh, to me explaining what the podcasts are and where you can find it. And I need a drink. Uh, today, like literally, so I, I've actually got two announcements. We'll do two. The first one is that today or tomorrow, I should be receiving notification that the audio book, the audio book version of the Raw Feeding 101 book stuff and I might even be reaching out to a couple of people to give it a preliminary listen to see what they thought and to see how it turned out. I'll obviously be listening to it as well, but I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. If I remember correctly, and I might be over-exaggerating here, but I think that if I'm remembering correctly, Amazon listed it as a guesstimated length of six to 10 hours. So it's not going to be a short listen. <laughs> so if you do want to be somebody that gets to listen to it uh, first, one of the first people to listen to it, then let me know. But woof, it's going to be a long listen. I'm excited for it because it's my book, but that's happening. And I'm really excited for that because there are people like myself that <clears throat> unless it's just 100% not available on audiobook, and then I just might not read it, then I have to read it on audio. Like 99% of the books that I read are audiobooks because I can just digest them easier. For so, so for somebody like me, I'm excited that the book, the Raw Feeding 101 book is coming out in audio format because I'm not the only person out there like that. So if you are that kind of person, then that is coming. I have no idea what the price is going to be because 
the way that Amazon works with audiobooks, it's all based off of the length of the book and they set the price. I can't do anything about that. So I can't tell you guys what it's going to be until I publish it, but I will let you guys know as soon as I know. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> Sean, can you use duck heads in a bone broth? I want to feed my dog brain, but the heads are too big and most pieces are always, most places are always sold out of brain. I'm just, I'm just rereading re that, Sean. I, di I didn't quite follow that one. Can you use duck heads in a bone broth? I want to feed my dog's brain, but the heads are too big and most places are sold out. Hmm. Of brain, Sean cut them up. Awesome. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm not following you completely on this one. Maybe I'm just being silly here and I'm not totally picking you up, but A, yes, you can feed the duck heads all together. Yes, you can put them in to bone broth if you want to. And if you want to just get to the brain and your dog is having a hard time getting to them, then yes, you can cut them open exactly like Christine said. <laughs> so I hope that that helps. Uh, she said, I think he wants to feed brain and not waste the bone. Uh, okay. Yes, you can. If that's what you're talking about, then yes, you can do that as well. I mean, you can do all of it or you can just feed, you can crush up the bone as well and let your girl go at that, Sean. But yeah, if you just want to feed the brain, you just want to get the brain out then by all means, cut that sucker open, break that sucker open, whatever you got to do, get the brain out and then use the rest for bone broth. You'll, it'll be great. It'll be a great addition to your bone broth. And if you do that, I'd love to see some, some pictures, video, anything that you got posted in the raw feeding 101 group. Uh, let's see here. 1972 Laoshu is here with us, everybody. Hello, Scott and everyone. Sorry I'm so late, but we are out to dinner. Just wanted to stop by and give the thumbs, thumbs up. I'll catch you on the replay. 1972 Laoshu, Dayton, I appreciate it. We love you. Get back to your date, slash dinner, slash whatever it is. We love you. We forgive you. Come back and watch the replay. Um, <laughs> it says, also, I missed the breakfast bowl on Saturday and can't find it. Can you post a link? Uh, Dayton, 1972 Laoshu, you didn't miss it. It's not until this Saturday, the 14th at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. So you didn't miss it. You just can't find it because we haven't done it yet. Um, and Christine is saying, I have a membership with Audible. Yes, that's the platform on your guys' end for Amazon and audiobooks. It's called Audible, for those of you guys that don't know. And Christine is saying that she has a membership with Audible and they have a three book plan. There you go. There you go. So Christine will be able to get her hands on the Raw Feeding 101 audiobook for sure. And she's also saying, and if you sign up to Audible, you get a free book. There you go. Sign up to Audible, get a free book. Go and listen to the book for free. Leave a review. Just do me that solid. Go and get the book for free. Take advantage of that awesome program and then leave a review. It works out for everybody. I get an awesome review. You guys get a free book. Come on. Super easy, super easy. Uh, let's see here. Did I miss anything? Oh, Sean's clarifying. I just want brain in her diet somehow. I feel like the heads are too large. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah, you can do all those different things, Sean. If you want to get that brain out of there, feed it to your girl, use the rest of it for uh, bone broth or you know, break that down maybe with a mallet or something like that, and then use that as bone content across a couple of different days. You can definitely use that brain and not let the bone and everything else go to waste. Uh, let's see here. Sean says, I just need to look harder, I guess. And Christine's saying at the store, they sell brain. Yeah, but that also at the same time, um, it does vary from region to region. Like in my local grocery stores, Good luck finding brain. Uh, and the only brain that you can find is pork. Not that that's bad. I'm just saying that's the only brain that you can find. I've never seen duck brain in our area. And it's scarce sometimes. Sometimes you can't find it at all. Uh, one thing that you could look at as well, Sean, is uh, sweetbreads. It is beef thymus gland. It's part of that whole 
area. So it's not necessarily brain, but you could also look in that direction if you're wanting to add more non-liver organs to your dog's diet. And Heather's saying, I commute almost two hours a day, so if you want me to pre-listen to the book, I'd be happy to help. Ugh. Ugh. You poor, poor woman, Heather. <laughs> that is such a long commute. Holy cow. I that That is awful, but the payoff is going to hang out with elephants. I don't know. That's a pretty good payoff. That's a pretty good payoff for a drive to go and hang out with the elephants and get awesome pictures like that. How many people have pictures of elephants and it's not some stock photo from online? You took it. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. All right, really quick last thing here and then I'm gonna disconnect us guys is this Monday, right now as it stands, at 4 p.m. Pacific time, which would be 7 p.m. Eastern time. Again, 4 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, or 7 p.m. Eastern. This, mon this coming Monday, I will be talking with Billy from Answers. It's going to be epic. We're going to talk about a lot of fun stuff. I'm going to create an event and everything tonight so that you guys can get your reminder set to make sure that you can attend. It's going to be live, just like we're doing right now. So Billy from Answers is going to be live with yours truly, Dog Dad, and we're going to be talking about all kinds of awesome stuff. And better yet, again, we're going to be live. So you guys are going to be able to ask your questions from Billy as well. How epic is that? And if I understand correctly, this is going to be Billy's very first YouTube live stream. So we're also making history here. It's going to be a first time for him. So make sure that if you're not already and you're seeing this video and it's before Monday the, is it the 16th? Monday the 16th, that you subscribe and click the bell notification icon next to the subscribe button so that you get notified when I go live with Billy from Answers this Monday so you can ask your questions, you can hang out with us and have an awesome, awesome time. Probably talking about lots of goat stuff, okay? okay. All right, and do we have any final questions or comments here? Um, got to go for my massage, good night. Enjoy your massage, Christine. And Sean says, my commute is 35 minutes, no traffic, usually 40 in the a.m. After work, I feel your pain. Yeah, no fun. Commutes suck. But if you're going to hang out with an elephant, I don't know, how bad can it be, right? All right, guys, thank you so much for attending today's July 10th raw feeding live stream session here on YouTube with yours truly, Dog Dad. Make sure, again, that if you want to get started with raw feeding and you just don't know where to start, you want to start feeding fresh foods, go to rawfeeding101.com. It'll walk you through everything, sourcing your food, keeping costs down, transitioning, supplements, all of it. Go to rawfeeding101.com. But most importantly, remember that you don't have to be perfect to be an amazing dog owner or cat owner or whatever owner. You just have to be perfect. <laughs> I totally screwed that up. We're just, yeah, I screwed that up, guys. I screwed that up. You don't have to be perfect. You really don't. Just try your best every day and try to improve as you go forward. And there's my awful, terrible, screwed up ending. I don't screw those up very often. This is a good one. This is a good one that everybody gets to laugh at, you guys. All right, have a great week. I'll see you guys Friday in the Raw Feeding 101 group live stream, and I will see you this Monday live with Billy from Answers here on this channel. So subscribe and click that